I was probably about eight years old, eight or nine years old when I started going into proper professional kitchens. And I wasn't cooking, but what I did ex was exposed to was um, was actually the, the the actual environment of the kitchen. And then you could tell that the front of the house and the kitchen were really happy. And that whole sort of environment sort of was quite um, well impressive. But it also is something I wanted to be involved in. Still to this day, don't feel like I have a job. I just it's my hobby, I just get on with it. And first job, I, I went to a Fanet College, which is now called East Kent College in Broadstairs. Um, I did just a straightforward chef's course, which was cool at the time. Um, and then I think I left on the Friday, and then on the Monday I started in at the Intercontinental and High Park Corner. When I started cooking um, in London, I sort of realised that what my passion was was the seafood side of it and I, I sort of whether it was because the chef thought I was good at it I was working for or because I just naturally sort of gravitated to that area I ended up working on fish se sections everywhere. Rick Stein was sort of a hero of mine and he was has been so I used to watch him as you know his first sort of thing when I was younger but um, it was the only place at the time that was cooking amazing seafood was add the add the variety of seafood and I decided that you know that's where I wanted to work so I just got on a train at Paddington didn't have an interview or nothing just went down there and knocked on the door and said have you got a job and luckily for me they had one and I did a few few years there with Rick, um, learned everything I could. He, he actually told me that you need to move on. So I went to interviews at different places, but it was um, John Campbell who was at Lords of the Manor at that point. And it was actually, what was inviting for me was that I was gonna go in there at 20, I was 21 years old. Um, and he, he gave me a sous chef position at 21 years old, which is crazy. Yeah, you know, it's crazy to do, but he gave me, he just gave me that chance and uh, um, and I proved myself. What John taught me was how to run a kitchen and how to, how to actually um, be a chef opposed to being a cook. And I suppose that's what is a little bit of the difference between the two. At 23 years old and I thought I was like, I was running a kitchen There's probably about, must have been 16, maybe even 18 chefs in the kitchen and I was pretty much just walking around with a clipboard most of the day. Wasn't actually doing what I loved doing, which was cooking. So I decided that I'd cut completely what I was doing against everybody's <laughs> advice. I just just decided that I was going to go back to Cornwall. Um, I was going to open my own restaurant um, on my own. I had 15 grand to spend on the restaurant once we we'd got the lease, um, and it was just me in the kitchen on the first for the first week. I had no no KP, no nothing, and I was doing sort of 30 covers. Um, uh, it was interesting, and <laughs> yeah. So 23 years. So you'd gone from. Yeah, having that support of a relay chateau property, you know, five star property, all two mission support, stars, all that yeah. support, to having none of that support. Personally, I just got married. Just my son was two weeks old, um, and we were living in my brother-in-law's uh, bedroom. We didn't even have a, couldn't even afford to have a, how, a rent a, rent a place in, in in Cornwall. So it was sort of like, you know. It, Everyone was saying I was crazy, what are you doing? But I just knew it was the right thing for me to do. Black Pig opened May 2003, May the 20th, 2003. I remember it very, very distinctively. Um, and um, within eight months, we'd got a Michelin star. So I was sort of like, wasn't expecting any of that. In Rock, um, it's a very, very seasonal place. So in the winter time, there's nobody around. We got the star in the January. The November before we got the star, we'd done nine, no, seven covers in a week. Like, it's that quiet. Wow. So you sort of start um, panicking a little bit. And I was in business then with my in-laws at the time, um, and it just didn't work. We just got to a point where the we realised the business wasn't going to support three people that were running it. Um, and I made a decision to sort of close the restaurant, went and worked for somebody. Mm -hmm. They opened a luxury B&B &B with six rooms, um, like a boutique but b and &B. It was very good as well. They, they, they sort of did very well when they opened that. Out of my control, that restaurant shut um, because the guys decided that the corn was too quiet for them, so they sold, sold the property. Um, so I was sort of left in a little bit of, right, okay, what do I do now? So I took over a role um, in Foy, um, uh, sort of a failing, hotel restaurant that wasn't doing that great um, and that was the first time I actually put my name above the door um, and that's when at the same time that's when I got asked to do Great British Menu as well so that's probably a little bit of a catalyst and that sort of helped and be a bit busier. Then you had the credit crunch and the guy who owned the hotel 
um, had to sell the hotel. And then I decided to move to all the way back to Rock again, where my original restaurant was, and, and take over at a place called the St. Enoduck Hotel. If only I had two restaurants I ran. So I decided to open a casual restaurant. Um, I say casual restaurant, it's sort of an 80 cover restaurant that's sort of um, sort of brasserie, sort of standard restaurant that was just good cooked food, using all the local produce, alongside a fine dining restaurant that was very niche. So that's the first time I decided to go completely fish. So I decided to sort of look at um, doing my first own, own place, which was, um, we did a little fish kitchen, which is where you took, bought the lease on a very small, beautiful little restaurant. Um, but it was the first time that we actually bought something ourselves. And at the same time, I'd already I've, I'd been approached by the Capital Hotel in Knightsbridge for the consultancy, so that was something new as well. I'd never done a consultancy before. Um, so the, the consultancy, basically what it means is I, I run, take responsibility of overseeing the food and beverage within the Five Star, ho the five -star Hotel, um, but I don't have to pay for the staff, I don't have to do all that sort of stuff, the, the hotel does that. Um, but as a consultant, you can say what you what you think and you can advise them as much as you want to, but at the end of the day, they're still gonna run the restaurant the way they wanna run it. Um, but obviously, the, the situation I've got with the capital is a good one because the family have been in, in the industry for, for many years, so they, they do take the advice. Um, whereas, yeah, the worry with being a consultant when you were maybe with investors that are not in the industry, it might be a bit different, and I would probably avoid that. Um, so I did that at the same time as opening my own place, just Rachel, my, my wife and I, we sort of bought a lease on this little restaurant. And that was the first time I realised, you know, what, how, what it feels like to make all them decisions 100% yourself. I mean, there's a plus, the good side and the bad side. I mean, the bad side is if you make the wrong decision, you got, you're the one that's going to 100% take the consequences. So if you've made a wrong decision and you lose money, which I have done before, um, you know, and it's quite painful to the business. But the plus side is you can do exactly what you want. Um, and I, I sort of liked that feeling. I liked that, that I could just sort of, you know, if I wanted to put some art on the wall, I could put it on. If I wanted to play what music I want in the restaurant, I could do it. Um, you know, and the structure of the menu, no one's going to say you can't do it. Well, it ruined the original idea of rolling and doing a few of them because the idea of Fish Kitchen was, I thought, right, there's lots of these beautiful little properties in Cornwall that are all sort of your typical, if you were to turn up at a really idyllic sort of Cornish uh, little village, fishing village, you'd probably be quite nice to go and have a crab you know, salad in, and you know where the crabs have come from. And it's like, I thought, well, it would be quite nice to do maybe a few of these around Cornwall. You know, low rent, low staff, but in the summer they do well. And you can afford to shut them in the winter. Um, but it went and got a star, so it ruined that. Because so, obviously I'm not going to roll out Michelin style restaurants. That's that's just stupid. That that's just uh, you're on. Um, yeah, you know. I don't think that's the sort of thing that anyone should do is try and roll out restaurants at that standard, um, because it takes a lot. And you know, so so what what Fish Kitchen has become, whether I like it or not, has become its own little destination restaurant in itself. Um, so which is quite nice. And so it, what it does give us is all the restaurants that I do have, they all have a slight difference to them. So there's nothing that's not, it's certainly not a concept or a, or a brand that's sort of like repeating itself. Every little restaurant's got different, um, different touches to it, which is quite nice, especially from the customer's point of view. So you can go and have a fine dining meal and you, you know, as a special occasion, you can have the wine tasting and everything, or you can go and eat simple seafood dishes that are still good quality, still the same ingredients, and, and the price is yeah, a bit more affordable. So, um, yeah, and it, from my point of view, it's great because the customers come down to that area of the country and they're, they're around for a whole week and they can eat in different places. And then you've got the pub as well. Yeah, what I decided to do when I moved out of the hotel was to actually change the way we were working. And um, so this is back um, in March last year. We actually, instead of being open five days, we're open four days a week. Um, so, now, so now the guys are off every Sunday, every Monday. Uh, we close for six weeks over Christmas, New Year's and January. So we do all that as well to get rid of all the holiday. So no one, everyone has a nice holiday. Um, and um, say on a Tuesday, they do the prep for the week until whatever, four or five o'clock in the evening. And then they have the evening off on a Tuesday as well. Dubai, I mean, that came about, you know, if you said to me only two years ago, Nathan, you're gonna do tank abroad, I would have said no chance. But um, through, I think through what we've done in the UK with the restaurants and, and the impact we've had on, from my point of view, from my niche of what the cooking that I do, um, 
basically what happened, the general manager of the Burj Al Arab, if anyone knows that, the hotel with a big sale that's in Dubai, um, he, he came to Cornwall and ate, not even in the two-star, actually ate in the fish kitchen um, before he, he moved out there to become the new general manager of the hotel. And that must have been October, not last year, the year before. Um, and then he, made, he gave me a phone call, probably May, May time last year, um, and said, can you come over? We want to talk to you about opening a restaurant in Dubai. And I just thought it was a joke, thought someone was having a laugh. So I went over and first thing I, I walked into the hotel, Everybody was lovely, which they're going to be when they're trying to sort of like impress you, I suppose. But then I went into the kitchen, straight into the fish uh, fridge, and then there was box of box of fish from Cornwall, and there was uh, some oysters from Cornwall, and there was also a box of um, of these lovely oysters from Ireland as well that I just visited. And I thought they either know what I'm doing and setting me up, because <laughs> I, but um, no, I just looked for it all, and uh, and the quality was there. And I think what they've done is they've managed to get three flights a day. Uh, from the UK and from Paris uh, come into Dubai with full of fresh produce. Um, and then also there's some local stuff as well, which actually is pretty good, which, which is exciting for me because I'm going to learn all about that as well. And even, even now I've been cooking for over 20 years, I'm still, it's still exciting like to, to find new, discover new stuff. I decided um, then and there that I could do it. Um, the infrastructure of the place, it's been open for 16 years. Um, the biggest challenge for me will be taking what is a French, currently a French restaurant, which is actually, funnily enough, the same thing that was with the capital, it's a French restaurant, and then making it a British restaurant. All the time I've been in Cornwall, I've been supporting Cornwall College by just going down there and doing the odd demonstration and stuff like that. And, and whenever you do an event like a, a cookery demonstration or something in Cornwall at one of the festivals, that the college always supports, as if this college does as well, but they support them events and you get to meet people. So probably Five years ago, a guy called Stuart Matheson, who was a senior lecturer um, um, and in charge of the whole faculty of, um, of the food and, and tourism department, said to me, look, you know what, you've done so much with us, why don't you just do some, a bit more and, um, and open an academy? And I said, well, if I did it, I want to do it, not just because it's putting your name on it, but it's just to, to encourage people to come into the industry, like I just said about chefs. So what I tend to do is we opened Academy Nathan Outlaw, really, not to not to be a fine dining academy, it's to be just to bring confidence and it's to bring it's to get people that probably don't think they can do it and make them think they can do it and just to give them give them courage and and help them and mentor them. So I go down there probably nine times um, an academic year and I'll do a series of master classes with the ones that want to be part of that academy. There's no, they don't have to pay for it or anything like that, they just apply for it um, and pretty much everyone gets on it as long as they've got the right attitude. Um, and then what we do is they also have a chance to come up to all three of my restaurants. So they come work in the fine dining, the fish kitchen and the pubs. They see different, three different things. Female chefs is quite an interesting thing. I mean, I, I just, said to, like my daughter, for example, is already saying she wants to be a chef. And, you know, I'll encourage her. But at the same time, I'll say, you, you, there's no getting away from the fact that I think that female chefs have to give up a lot more than male chefs within this industry if you want to get to the top. And that is, you, know, you talk to Claire Smith, you talk to Angela Hartnett, who are friends of mine, or April Bloomfield, or you know Claire Clark, they're all good friends of mine. They have had to give up a lot more than a man has had to give up in this industry. You know, and I'm talking about the personal side. So it's harder, yeah, it's hard. But, but I've worked, also worked, you know, them four women that I've just said are all amazing chefs, at the top of their game. And so there is, there's no, I think it's just a natural thing while there's that, the, the, the balance of, of, of male and female in the industry. I'm actually surrounded by my women in my, my business. I've got my wife, my mum, my restaurant managers are all, all, all ladies. So um, I, I, I caught of it's quite good to have that balance, actually. I don't like a, a kitchen full of blokes. I think it's a bit weird. But there you go. But uh, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's good to have that a bit of a break. But, um, you know, I think, it'll be get, I think it will be more, much more approachable as it is for people that are older that want to change their career. I think that's the important part of it as well. The first one is, was about species of seafood. Second one was techniques. So they were both a little bit more chefy. This one is more everyday. So it is, it is it's sort of aimed at novices, people getting into cooking fish and a little bit more, um, yeah, simpler. So less ingredients, people, things that you can get readily available um, and it's just I think it's the best one I've done because it, because of them reasons I think it's just 
um, are nearly nice. And the, you know, I actually write my books and do all the dishes and every picture you see in any of my books I've done myself and have, have actually cooked it. So um, yeah, no, it's a good thing to do. My favourite is mackerel. Yeah, I know, and people think, well, mackerel, but it's because it can do so much with it. I mean, I think you can use it in so many different ways. Um, it's fun to catch, it's a bit of a laugh. If you don't catch, you don't catch, you go out fishing and you don't catch anything, you you should catch the mackerel. If you don't catch mackerel, you're terrible at fishing. But um, it's just, you can eat it as soon as you get it on the boat. You can eat raw, you can have it cured, you can have it smoked, you can have it barbecued, you can do so many different things with it. And I think it's, um, and it's one of them fish that if it's, uh, if it's not quite fresh enough, it's, you can't serve it. It's, uh, so you know, it's the one thing I sort of, I'm always suspect about when I go to other restaurants. <laughs> I need to know where it's from.